Finally, Cyberpunk 2077 is here, and after seeing some early reports of the game being incredibly hard to run, I wanted to see for myself if that was actually the case. And turns out, it mostly is. It's not as bad as those early articles that I first saw, but still, some of you will be considering a GPU upgrade after what you're about to see. Graphically, this is one of the best games that I've ever played, and it's fully fleshed out with ray tracing and Nvidia's DLSS, which we'll of course be diving into today. So, how much GPU power do you actually need to run the new Cyberpunk 2077? Let's take a look. As you could probably imagine, I'm not too far into the game just yet. I've just completed the initial playthrough of the game to the point where it lets you explore the open world, and man is this game detailed. It's unbelievably dense, there's a ton of objects, NPCs, vehicles, and reflective surfaces. It's understandable that this game would be hard to run just by taking one look at it. Now this is purely a GPU benchmark video, we're taking a handful of a variety of GPUs from different price ranges and release states from the RX 580 up to the RTX 3090. Although there have been a ton of GPUs launching recently, stock is still looking fairly dry, and most of you will be playing this game on older GPUs. I've chosen a fairly straightforward 70 second benchmark run that has produced fairly consistent results from run to run. There is some variation here in terms of population density, the amount of vehicles that you encounter, but I'd say this gets us 99% of the way there. So before we take a look at the newer graphics technologies that this game supports, such as real-time ray tracing and DLSS, and whether whether those are even worth enabling, let's first take a look at what you can expect in terms of pure rasterization performance. So let's start with 1080p, and it's immediately clear that at this resolution we're encountering a pretty firm CPU bottleneck at around 105 to 110 FPS. The CPU that we're using here is a 10 core 10900K overclocked to 5.1 GHz along with 4000 MHz memory, which I think we'd all agree is no slouch. Moving down the stack we have the 3060 Ti averaging just 92 and a half FPS when we're using the high preset. By the way, that's one notch below the ultra preset and not even factoring in ray tracing. So yeah, this is a demanding game that makes the latest and greatest GPU suddenly feel old and less powerful. One GPU that surprisingly didn't do so well here and at other resolutions is the GTX 1080 Ti. Performance here is a notch below the Radeon 5700 XT, which manages 73 FPS on average. Then we have the older GPUs such as the Vega 56 and RX 580 which are screaming to be retired. They get absolutely slaughtered here in terms of frame rate even at 1080p. And I'd say that the RX 580 is the absolute minimum that you could get by with this game at 1080p. By lowering the quality settings to the absolute lowest we score just below a 60 FPS average in our particular benchmark run. And there is a clear visual quality hit when lowering things to the minimum. The game world looks a lot flatter. I'd also imagine the experience here would be fairly similar for those of you with a GTX 1060 as well. Moving on to 1440p though, we can now see sensible scaling between all of the GPUs in the stack. As a whole, Nvidia's Ampere GPUs seem to do a lot better here relative to AMD. Typically at 1440p we'd see the new 6900 XT at least match the 3090, but here it's around 10% behind. Same with the RX 6800 which should be a lot closer to the 3080 than what it is. Is. This is understandable though when you factor in that Cyberpunk 2077 is heavily endorsed by Nvidia and so their hardware is sensibly optimized a bit better for it. If you're rocking an RTX 2080 Ti you can get away with a comfortable 1440p gaming experience especially when you factor in DLSS which we'll take a look at in just a moment. 5700 XT owners on the other hand might want to consider lowering a few quality settings to get some playable frame rates at this resolution. And it's not unreasonable to call the RX 5700 XT a 1440p gaming GPU, but performance here is significantly lower than what you can expect from previous titles. Similar message here for those users with an RX 5700 or 5600 XT which were all very popular GPUs, these graphics cards will be fine for 1080p but 1440p will feel a bit lacking. So what does that mean for 4K then? Well it's pretty rough, the RTX 3090 tops the stack here with a criminally low 54.3 
FPS average. And again, this isn't even with the max visual quality preset or with a single ray of ray tracing. The RTX 3080 trails behind that by 11%, at which point we also see the 6900 XT getting an absolute beating, managing just 46 FPS on average. 4K gaming will still be possible in this game though with Nvidia's 30 series cards via DLSS, boosting the frame rate by quite a significant chunk. DLSS internally renders the game at a lower resolution and then uses AI to upscale it. Cyberpunk 2077 has four different DLSS presets available, all with different internal rendering factors. The higher quality the preset, the higher the internal rendering resolution is, and on the other end you have the performance modes which are upscaling from a significantly lower internal resolution and won't look as good. To be honest though, at least at 1440p, the first three DLSS presets, quality, balanced and performance, all look pretty similar and honestly they all look quite good. We're at a four times crop here which is the definition of pixel peeping but in my opinion the text, windows and tree look great on all of them. In fact without DLSS just at native 1440p you can see some of the text missing on the sign. This is one of the biggest differences that I noticed between native resolution and then when using DLSS. At native there are lots of objects in the game world that shimmer, flash and disappear as the game decides what is a rendering priority and what isn't. With DLSS though, you just don't encounter that, and in some cases, missing detail will be completely resolved, like this fence for example. As for which one to go for, I'd settle on the highest quality DLSS preset that you can afford in terms of frame rate, with balanced probably being the best setting for most of you overall. There is also an ultra performance DLSS mode, but I'd highly recommend avoiding it. The internal resolution is super low there, and it does look quite messy. But taking a look at the frame rate boost that the other three presets can give you, it's really substantial. Granted, we are looking at mostly Sky here and encountering a CPU bottleneck, and the performance scaling will of course depend on which RTX GPU you're using and at what native resolution you're playing at. As a whole though, DLSS is really a lifesaver for some RTX GPUs which would otherwise struggle at their familiar playable resolutions. Take the RTX 2060 for example, not an old GPU by any any means and definitely what I'd consider capable at 1080p resolution in most games. Cyberpunk 2077 on the other hand pins this card to an average of just 61 FPS in our benchmark run, but you will manage a little bit higher than that in more open areas of the map like this. By enabling the highest quality DLSS preset we gain around 40% on our average frame rate and in this case with the native resolution at 1080p, DLSS quality actually makes the game look significantly better. Much more detail detail is resolved and we don't get those shimmering and flashing artifacts that we get with native resolution. This is probably one of the best results for DLSS that I've seen in any game, both a significant quality and frame rate improvement just by enabling one setting. And I think the best part about this is that if you do have an RTX 2060 or 2060 Super and you are playing this game at 1080p, you can squeeze a bit more life out of those cards, in this game at least, before feeling like you need to upgrade. So if you do have a DLSS compatible GPU, which would be any Nvidia RTX card, generally it is recommend turning it on in this game. However, the best setting for your particular setup will also depend on your native resolution, so play around and see what gives you the best results. But now let's talk about ray tracing, which firstly is incredibly demanding in Cyberpunk 2077, but also makes the game look noticeably better. You've got three ray tracing settings to toggle on here, reflections, shadows, and then lighting, which also has a few different tiers. The most important setting to consider is ray traced reflections, as the game world does have a lot of highly reflective surfaces such as cars, buildings and windows, and having those physically accurate ray traced reflections as opposed to your usual reflection maps does make a big difference. Take this comparison here for example, on the left we have ray tracing completely disabled, then to the right of that we have enabled ray traced reflections and shadows, then we add ray traced lighting, medium, then ultra. There's a big difference between the first two examples visually and it's also the biggest performance hit. Then by adding ray trace lighting we do get slightly better illumination around that red neon sign and maybe on the cars passing by, but the visual improvement is barely noticeable considering the performance hit. Here's another example comparing ray tracing completely off versus only ray trace reflections enabled and it does make the biggest difference visually. If you could only choose one setting to enable this would be it. Reflections on the car are now physically accurate and convincing and then comparing it to ray 
series and completely maxed out, there isn't a huge difference. The amount of graphics power that you'll need to run ray tracing enabled though shouldn't be underestimated. An RTX 3060 Ti at 1440p with DLSS balanced enabled as well is pretty much the minimum. Even then, we're averaging just above 50 FPS, so I'd probably recommend disabling all ray tracing except for reflections and maybe even dropping the DLSS mode to performance. Ideally, if you plan on playing at 1440p with ray tracing enabled, you'll be using an RTX 3080 along with DLSS balanced or performance. By switching on ray trace reflections, shadows, and medium lighting, you can tank performance as much as 40%. Something else really interesting is that when we approach more population dense areas, the performance difference between DLSS on versus off closes to a very slim margin, meaning those areas of the game are likely CPU bound pretty early on. Something else we haven't really talked much about here is playing this game at 4K, and that's because there aren't many GPUs that can confidently do that, even when factoring in DLSS. As we saw, no current GPU can play this game at native 4K with high settings at 60 FPS. You'll need DLSS quality or balance to get decent frame rates at 4K with a 3080 or 3090, and then at DLSS performance mode if you additionally want to enable ray tracing like we see here. That gets us to around 70 FPS on average, which to be honest is okay, but it's not the smoothest or most responsive to play on, but the game does look absolutely amazing in terms of graphics. Additionally here, I'd probably drop the ray trace shadows and just leave the reflections to gain a bit more of that frame rate. So Cyberpunk 2077 is an absolutely phenomenal game. Graphically, it's just an incredible experience, one of the best that I've ever played, but it's also one of the first games that I've played that you know makes me want to overclock my GPU because I'm just not seeing the frame rate and performance that I'd like to see. And like I said in the intro, it is a bit unfortunate that the GPU stock situation is looking still pretty dry across the majority of models. Pretty much the only GPU models that I can see in stock at the moment are the RTX 3090 and the 3060 Ti. So I think the 3060 Ti is an excellent option at 1080p, and I think that's one option that many of you should be kind of looking towards for this game. Otherwise, a huge thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.